Oh, and welcome back, Beyond the Waters. Let's go to the bay. I think we'll dive back again at the anomaly to gain those two samples. Where to go? Kinda. I kinda know where to go. And I hope we can get those two. Then we'll go to your other ROV side. The first sample should be just beneath us on the rock to the right. I don't know why we didn't get it last time. Is it able, unable to? See, it should be right about here. This is the Medusa light. There, I think that is. The glow of an underfair and the soft shapes of its petal audience can be seen just behind the black rock. Apparently, we didn't even find it. That's a good power. That's a good power as well. Mm, there it is. Shielded from the veils by the puzzle pillar, this fan holds a small colony of petals that spawn speckled across its shield. The petals here have had their roots dug up by some creature we could take a sample of them here. There's a the veil. These glittering veils have formed a close perimeter around their fort that seem to be keeping their distance. Or the one that we can see around the door. We'll see both of them. We'll visit them. Okay, here I want to. Okay. I'll will try to find faint good pieces while spines of its body have broken away. Still faintly glowing in the seal, we could sample them here. This is, this is our second sample. Because it keeps a lot of fuel. That's so what I keep. This one is taking those two panels, I don't know why. those analysis of the cold fire fan spine required shows that the fans not only possesses light product protecting cells but also light receptors too these incredible sensitive cells are found on the front of the fan and show the fans are able to perceive the lights of other creatures, including other fans. As each fan tends to, uh, to its own oasis, perhaps the fans use their lights as territorial markers, signaling to other fans that their puzzled cone is taken. They may even use them to communicate with other species, responding to the flashing patterns of veils, for example, and letting them know not to approach their territory. Like lighthouses, cold fire fans seem to act as both safe havens and warning signals depending on the creature they are signaling. Mm. 
The sample required of the peripheral network shows the presence of bulbs within the root network. These bulbs appear to be a way of the bay for storing the energy gain and the photosynthesis of the fans line. Concealed in rock cracks and the softer silty substrate, the seafloor, they must allow bathers to outlive fans which die off or stop producing light. This suggests that despite appearances, it is not the fans which maintain the bathers but the other way around. Bathers that, despite appearing like worshippers of the fans, clustered around their bases, create the conditions for the fans to grow within, ensuring themselves a regular supply of light in exchange for oxygen, in a sense the fans of the captives. Then we collected all the samples and now from the pine poles we need to go to the left to the north west. More to the northwest to the west. So I think should go like this. In what we have once been the vessel's hole or passage into the overflow material. The brine has left everything but the vaguest shape of the vessel and possibly for the brine. We are entering the main body of a wreck now. It's little more than a husk. It is impossible to tell anything from this rusted place. Whose ship was this? The local ecosystem looks to have been scraping away at the stream for decades. Every much left for us. This bay, perhaps once a cargo hold, is being scraped away by our front like creatures, placing flakes of orange rust into the world. Half buried in sand, the industrial seals of a good worker have held. It must have been protected from the perpetual bay this bay. Look, a steel silk dive worker. Let's see if we can get it open. Okay, I think I go over. Yes, it's open. But there's no over here. Wait, this cutting torch looks clean enough. With a little work, this could be salvaged. Is this by Coltec? Hard to tell. Looks compatible with the suit though. I'll store it and see what I can do with it when we get back to base. The plates of the work buckle and bend outwards here, bent away by some huge interior force. The craters clustered around the vessel suggest an explosive force of some considerable magnitude. Most of the wreck must have already been lost to the brine, 
Only this section remains precociously, precariously settled on the silk bank. This set of seeps have been created by the wreck's impact. Perhaps the branches the better at protecting the information in the world. A crested shell sits on the edge of the brine pool. Its former inhabitant nowhere to be seen. Good sample of the Whatever its origin, the wreck here has become a sanctuary for the ocean's life, is a beauty to its reclamation. None of this adds up. If there's a wreck here, then there were people. And if there were people, well, why doesn't everybody really know about this place and all its incredible life? I spent centuries looking for life inside one of Earth and found nothing. I've seen so many dead planets, so many barren worlds, I've certified each of them clear of life. Just so an excellent extraction corp can pick them clean for maximum profit. Strip mine of them for, for the resources are ever expanding species needed. This place is impossible. One in a million, and yet it is already marked by a greedy fund fingerprint. Who brought this ship here? This has to be the history we now wanted to uncover. Let's head back to base. That's more to find, I'm sure of it. In order of here, the debris field fades away as the ocean floor slopes towards the distant plain. That's where th those two buttons sw sw keep swapping places. <laughs> If I press the like, top one, it's, it's not. There is no drones. If I press the bottom one first, there's no drones either. <sighs> Something has happened. Come to medical now. Mina is growing. She. I haven't dared. I haven't dared to go in. I can't make sense of the readouts. Her vitals are unreadable, but she is still alive. Whatever kept her life on, the slope is changing her somehow. I've been sat here watching her. I, I, I don't know what to do. Do you think she's in pain? I think she is dead. I hope so. She doesn't seem to be suffering, but then I don't know what this is. There are procedures. Every base stack is equipped with a quarantine systems. I can authorize the lab to be purged, and it now. Is that still me? I, I, I don't really think. Should I authorize the purge? I don't think they are. No, you're right. That's me. I didn't come all this way to just to read to my door to try to understand what is happening here. Thank you. I won't give up on her. I won't be afraid of what I don't understand. We can find the answers together. Okay. We can do this. I've hooked up that cutting torch from the debris field. We can cut into that animal we found on the slopes. Bring some samples. We are going to need all the power and oxygen we can get. No more secrets. First, let's see what I found some Is Mina in Mina? What has this place done to her? I've probably been able to leave the medical level, but I dare not enter the surgery. Did she do this by choice? For those few months on Kemper 62F, it was clear that Mina was struggling with something. We will never spoke about it. But behind her intensity lay a freezing self-doubt. She never talked about her family. All I knew was that she was a rare spacer, born out in the black on some orbital military base. Some days she would only leave a breath, just curl up so small start staring silently out. Would she do this on purpose? Open up her suit and willingly slip into the deep? I suppose it does nothing. All I can do is monitor her. At least I am not alone.
because this thing is not open. Something along Cross Shell has made the function on their mucus line bubbles clear. After seeing long crests scavenging around and even entering into the brine pools, it seems obvious that their bubbles are in fact natural scuba gear, allowing them to move around the anoxic environment of the brine lake. The shell confirms this with a clear vent in the shell which allows the long crest to access the gas within the bubble without breaking it. This unique evolution means that despite the slow speed and sheer ignorance of what goes on around them, lung crests are highly resilient. Their thick shells and bubble crests together forming a kind of analog to my own dive suit. I will be sure to say hello to these fellow divers the next time we visit the brightness. East of the East Reef and the sample. We need to get the sample. Take lots of oxygen samples. I'll as many as we can because I think I know where we need to go, but I cannot be sure. And yet we have so much body. Keep. Oh, so let's go back to the blue. And uh, if I remember, there's still one place with the unopened door we need to visit as well. So we'll try doing that as well. For that, we need to go straight down. so long since we've been here. I do not miss this place. I don't even know if I'm taking the right... if I'm going the right direction. I don't think so far. It's the way. Maybe it is not direction at all. I don't know. That's the problem. I have no memory of the map. And if I have a memory, it gets over there. What are we doing out here? Being through the remains of the room? No more wondering, we should be heading deeper. That's where the answers lie. Calling the drone, we need to cut our way into the anomaly at the bottom of the shaft. There. Okay. I'll listen to you. This time. But since you are so persistent, we'll do this next time. For now, thank you very much. Stay alive and see you soon. Bye!